What is up YouTube, Crafting Cars here, happy Tuesday. Now for today's video, we're gonna be installing some modern day aftermarket headlights onto our 1997 Honda Civic project car. These ones are pretty cool because they are black housing, just like the ones on the car currently, but they have a built-in daytime running light. So that should make the front end look pretty sharp. Can't wait to see how it turns out. And after we're done installing these lights here, I'm gonna go outside and I'm gonna show you guys the new daily driver I picked up for this Minnesota winter time. So stay tuned. get our old headlights out of there. The first thing I'm gonna have to remove is this carbon fiber cooling plate, followed by these headlight covers here. At that point, we can remove the front grille and then the front bumper. Go ahead and unplug the main headlamp from both sides. Right back here. Now, for some reason, I only have three bolts in there, but usually these headlights are held on with four bolts. You got one in the corner here by the fender, two up top, and then one on the inside, usually by the grill there. So as I remove the headlight here, I'm gonna be careful not to uh, pull on the corner light wires just because the corner light is still connected. Now you can access the corner light from reaching up underneath the fender, kind of in between the tire and the headlight housing. But since I have plus size tires on here, it's pretty tight back there. And then say you have uh, still the factory fender liners, you'd have to remove that to get at the corner light. So just to make our lights a little easier, we're just gonna slowly pull it off. They give you plenty of slack on those corner lights, so you don't really have to worry about ripping them out or anything like that. They just turn, pull her out just like that. This is gonna be one of the easiest videos we've ever done. Now in order to light up our LED beam here, we're gonna have to borrow power from the turn signal light. So they actually provide you with a little LED driver. I'm sure this is just like a typical little resistor box and you're supposed to tap these using these quick connects into your turn signal power wires. Now, you go ahead and open up a Chilton manual and you wanna see what wires to tap into for your power and ground. Um, it says the, let's see, right front parking slash turn signal light. The ground wire is going to be black and then the power wire is going to be green slash yellow. So make sure that checks out. This one is your black wire and this one right here is the green slash yellow wire. All right, so just a quick disclaimer for you guys. As most of you know, the 6th Gen Civic platform is very popular among tuning enthusiasts. Um, makes really good project car for, you know, a lot of people starting out. But as the years go by, this platform is actually becoming quite collectible. So if you want to maintain the resale value of your Civic, it's important that you do not cut into or modify your chassis electrical harness. It's not working. Why is it not working? I think the best spot to test for power will be here at this plug. Sure enough, zero volts, 0 0.178. Yeah, basically nothing. Let's see if I move it over here. Oh, eight volts. I got a good connection there. There we go, 11.7, so basically 12 volts. So I guess we're hooked up to the wrong, uh, Wrong wires here. All right, so we followed the schematic here, um, saying that the right front parking single slash turn light should have a green and yellow power wire. So that's what we're hooked up to. Uh, this is, it should be 96 to 2000 Civic chassis uh, without DRL. I guess it counts my Civic as one with DRL or daytime running lights. I 
I guess maybe it counts the corner light as a daytime running light. I guess I'm not so sure how that works. Uh, but yeah, if you follow this schematic here, go down the, let's see, left front, oh yeah, right front parking slash turn signal light says it's gonna be red and black. And sure enough, if you look at our wires here, this is a red and black wire, and this is the one that was getting the 12 volts. So I guess we're just gonna have to move the power wire here, which is the gray wire going to the green yellow. We're gonna have to cut that off and move it over to the red and black wire. And then we'll do another test. Hopefully it should work. All right, so now this side is installed. I got the wires tucked and everything. So how I routed that, I've got the resistor box using the 3M adhesive stuck really nicely to the chassis there. So I don't think that's going anywhere. Um, you can see the gray and black wires. I kind of got them up, tucked in and around going into the engine bay there. Now they come out this hole right here. You can see I kind of got them up, zip tied to that hole right there just to kind of keep them out of the way. So when you're looking at the engine bay, you can't see them. Nice, clean install. I'm gonna go ahead and do the same exact thing to the other side. Meanwhile, I'll let my phone cool off, throw it on the charger. Gotta get something to eat and I'll catch back up with you. <laughs> All right guys, so I'm gonna go ahead, piece everything else back together. I'm gonna make any small adjustments that I have to make just to make sure everything lines up and all our gaps don't look too bad. And then we'll check everything out once everything is complete. I'm really excited. Can't wait to see what it looks like with the bumper, the grill, um, the carbon fiber, and then what it looks like with the hood closed as well. All right guys, so here's what we're looking at. Super happy with how it turned out. Go ahead and shut the hood for you. Oh yeah. Go ahead and turn on the headlights. This is my first time seeing it all together too. Oh my goodness. Welcome to the future. It's a whole new look. Yeah, I'm very happy with that. That's sweet. Holy crap. Wow. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. That is awesome. <laughs> so I hope you guys are as stoked on those lights as I am. So now we're to the portion of the video where I'm gonna show you guys the new daily driver I picked up for winter time. So Quick little backstory, my old winter daily driver um, was a 2006 Honda CRV Special Edition. Some would call it the cleanest CRV in the area. Maybe the, maybe the cleanest second gen CRV in the States. So uh, yeah, unfortunately about three months ago uh, that car was totaled out. It was parked uh, down in front of my buddy's house in the cities. And uh, yeah, somebody, uh, some reckless driver crashed into my parked car and completely totaled it out. Um, I got some pictures of it, but yeah, they smashed in the rear, um, smashed the front. They actually hit another car as well, and insurance wasn't very helpful with the whole situation and everything, so yeah, that was fun. Um, ever since then, I had this hole in my heart, and it's about the size of a 2006 Honda CRV Special Edition, and there really is only one way to fill that kind of hole with another 2006 Honda CRV Special Edition. So here is my new car. Let me show you around it. So a little bit of backstory on the car. So this is a one owner vehicle. I made sure to check the Carfax before purchasing. Uh, I spent about half its life in Massachusetts and then another half its life in Orlando, Florida. Um, it was just, yeah, like I said, one owner. Uh, for a while on Carfax, it looked like he had it as like a business vehicle. So I'm not sure what exactly he did with it or if he just wrote it off for business as like a tax write off or something, um, but it is very, very clean. Now, since it is from Florida, the clear coat is a little bit more faded than my old CRV, um, but if you guys remember, we restored the paint on my old CRV pretty well, and I believe we're probably gonna have to do the same thing with this, giving it a full paint correction. So I've got the tools for the job now. A um, couple things I want to, you know, take care of is it's got this pinstripe on there. I'm gonna want to get rid of that, uh, but that's a good indication that it was probably an old person that owned this thing before. This is a painted-on pinstripe. Now it's kind of hard to get a good look at the paint right now, but it's covered in a you know a nice layer of dust that's been raining and there's a lot of pollen right now. So yeah, as you can see. Pretty dang clean um, all over the front of the car unfortunately see these little marks that kind of look like you know, it just kind of looks like little like bug splats um, but if you look close it kind of looks like it's into the clear coat and yeah 
So down in Florida, they got these things called love bugs. And there's a season kind of down in Orlando where there's just huge swarms of them. And when they hit your car, if you don't wash them out fast enough, their blood is like acid and it etches into your clear coat. So those are gonna be fun to get out. <laughs> That's uh, one pretty you know gnarly defect of the front of the car, but we'll do our best to take care of that. And if all this fails, maybe we'll get a respray in the spring. Um, but overall, paint's not too bad. Uh, most of this shit should buff out. This uh, Nighthawk Black Pearl is one of like the softest paints out there. So it, uh, it's a little trickier um, to buff, but uh, once you shine it up, this color looks really, really nice. So really stoked on that. But yeah, looking underneath here, check that out. That's the sway bar right there. You can see the axles and everything. Just ridiculously clean, even the exhaust. Looks awesome. So the one small rust spot I noticed is it's got this like little gas tank protection. And I think this is like, it's like kind of like a little skid plate. I believe on my old CRV, this is either undercoated or it was a plastic one. You kind of see along the edges, it's got some surface rust, but that'll be pretty easy to fix. Um, everything else though, just ridiculously clean. Yeah, you don't see them like this in Minnesota, so that's really nice. One of the first things I'm going to be doing on this car is giving it a full undercoating. Yeah, so far all the electronics seem to work. Yeah, it looks awesome here. Sorry the sun's so intense glaring through the windows. Yeah, even the back. Now this one actually did come with OEM floor mats. Um, I already sold those already though, so I'm starting to part out my old CRV and some of the parts that I don't need on this CRV, I'm parting out as well. Um, seats and everything are in pretty good condition. They did, uh, they have a little bit of fading compared to my old seats um, in my old CRV, and they're not quite as soft uh, just due to the sun being so intense down there in Florida. Um, yeah, I just kind of know sitting in them, they're a little harder. And then the dash as well, it's kind of a little bit harder than my old dash, just once again from kind of baking in the sun down there. But we'll try our best to restore it. I'm probably just going to end up swapping the seats uh, with my old CRV and then the steering wheel as well. You can see this Honda emblem's got some chipping probably swap this out so that's kind of the nice part about having a donor car so my old crv is parked at my sister's house right now i've slowly been kind of pulling parts off it you can see nice and clean in here no rust or any major corrosion or anything like that now this has 170,000 miles and for the k24 it really ain't no big deal on the carfax the service history they got every single service interval done at a honda dealership even small things like flushing out the brake fluid and the power steering fluid and a lot of stuff that's normally overlooked. And you can see, I got it for $6,750. I actually bought it on Craigslist for $6,500 and then I had it shipped up straight to my house. It was actually delivered right at my doorstep for $800. So not too bad to be shipping from Florida all the way to Minnesota for only $800. I basically Amazon Prime this thing. So yeah, pretty happy with the purchase. Like I said, we're really gonna have to clean up that paint, try to make it look like brand new again. But overall, I think it's gonna clean up nice. And I'm excited to see where this build goes. All right, so that's gonna do it for today's video. Uh, let me know what you guys think about the new lights on the Civic and our new little daily driver project we got out there. So I am very excited to keep working on both the cars, um, getting that CRV ready to go for winter time, and then basically wrapping up a lot of the exterior stuff on the Civic and focusing on what I wanna do next year to make the car uh, a little bit more enjoyable for me, a little bit more my style. So uh, yeah, stay tuned. We upload every single Tuesday. You can follow me on Instagram at afton.voit.ej8. Probably follow you back. I like checking out your guys' builds as well. Uh, yeah, that's all I got for you guys this time, and I will see you next Tuesday. Bye-bye.